Our adventures at Big Bend continue. We're going to hike the Lost Mine Trail and the Grapevine Hill to the Balanced Rock. Then we'll visit a town called Terlingua before moving to the Rio Grande village on the eastern part of the park. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Yeah. Good morning. Today we woke up early because we're doing a very popular hike here at Big Bend. I mean, it's 7 a.m. and the parking lot is almost full. I'm doing the Lost Mine Trail. 4.8 miles round trip, 1,100 feet elevation. Got plenty of water and plenty of energy. Let's do this. Here we've got a little bit of a view. Yeah, I've got a feeling this is gonna be an epic hike. Here they have some benches in case you want to take a break, but we continue relentlessly uphill. So far, fairly easy trail. Although I know we're gonna be hitting some switchbacks as we get closer to the top. The higher we get, the better the views. Oh yeah, the views keep getting better and better. Yes, all of a sudden here we have our fair first Expansive view here of the Jesus Mountains, as I said, and uh, does not disappoint. We continue going up. We are what, like three quarters of a mile in or so. So we're doing great time, actually. By the way, I just ran into some viewers of the channel here. What are the chances on this beautiful hike here? And I have a feeling the, the views are gonna get even better and better. It is amazing. We just need a little bit of sunshine, that's all. But it's still early. It is a steady climb. Down one mile, so we should be about halfway up. That seems to be the window back there. And the next section is going to be like a tunnel through the woods. Prevent erosion, do not cut switch, switchbacks. I guess we're getting to the switchbacks now. I guess some people just climb up directly according to old trails. There we go, and we start, I started recording the hike, uh, you know, not at the beginning, I forgot, so like five minutes into the hike, we've done 36 minutes, 1.23 miles, we've gone up over five, 500 feet, and we still have two hours to go, that's where we're going, that's where we came from, that's the view. We very good hiking weather today. This morning, it's probably in the mid 50s. But there's like no wind at all to speak of. I mean, a little breeze here and there. I'm not even wearing the, the microphone. I think it's gonna come out good, just like this. No wind, no sun. I'm breaking a little bit of a sweat, but not much. This is perfect hiking weather. I think that's the campground down there. Yes, it is. 
I think I see minute in four. I think we have reached the end of the switchbacks, so we should be getting fairly close to the top. Here's an even better view of the campground. And there's Minitini behind the tree. That looks like the summit up there somewhere. Yeah, these stairs may be the hardest part. This is definitely the hardest part. This part is really kicking my butt. <laughs> and one thing I've noticed here in uh, Big Bend, I mean the trail is obvious where it goes, but it's, it's not marked by cairns or, or by blazes. It's just a trail. Whew. That's what happens when you're a flatlander and you come to the mountains. Oh, according to my galaxy watch, we are now two miles in. Yeah. There's no much more elevation to be gained here. We're almost at the top. Now it's mostly flat. This is just a, like a flat mesa here at the top. Someone was mentioning a false summit online, and I think this is what they were talking about. I don't know if I'm gonna go all the way up there, but let's see how high. Let's see how high I can climb. I just wanna see the view. Yeah, I think this is, I think this is as high as I'm gonna go. Well, yeah, these panoramic views were totally worth the hike. And it wasn't as strenuous as I thought it was going to be. Let me show you the view to this side as well. Amazing. Well now, let's start heading back.
um, one last view before we start heading back. It is magnificent. I wish you know, I could I could linger up here forever, wait till maybe the sun comes out. So all these rocks, you know, they're gonna be a lot more colorful that way. But we're going down. We have one more hike to do, most likely. It is so cool to be able to see the campground from all the way up here. Now the sun comes out. to the trailhead we're back what a hike that was awesome after that hike I need a hearty breakfast <sighs> goodbye Minitini we'll see you in a couple hours by the way look at that sky beautiful sky I mean we're getting a few clouds but we're getting blue skies here we're gonna get a lot of solar not that we need it today because uh, I decided you know instead of spending one more day breath. here I decided to take today uh, uh, you know I, uh, tonight as an early checkout and we're gonna go to a full hookup site just so we can replenish take a long shower much a much needed long shower and uh, fill up our batteries charge the Jackery and all that good stuff and uh, oh we have, we have to Take away, take away the trash. Let me do that real quick. We'll do it on the way back. Yeah, there's them. We're gonna do one last trail in this section of the park. Look at that. In a quarter mile, turn yeah. left onto Basin. That's junction. amazing. Here we're going to turn onto the main road for a little bit and then we're going to drive a little over 6 miles on the Grapevine Hills Road, which is unpaved but fairly well maintained. On this part of the road, you have to go through a wash or two here and there, but I think it is drivable by any vehicle, at least in dry conditions like we have today. Here's a primitive campsite, which by the way, you need a backcountry permit to stay at one of these. Maybe next time. According to the website, the road gets worse the farther you go. It is definitely getting progressively worse as we approach the trailhead. To the trailhead this is the balanced rock here we go this is where we're going 2.2 round trip 80 feet of elevation second hike of the day i have a feeling this one is gonna be great some of these rocks they look like they have figures sculpted on them that one almost looks like one of the heads from easter island by the way, it's really warming up now in the afternoon. So um, we brought plenty of water, but it's probably in the 90s <laughs> right now. And with the sun hitting you, it's, 
There's a breeze though, and the breeze feels very nice. It's a cannonball, like the ones, like the ones you see in the Badlands. I wonder if they are geologically related. Well, there's plenty of boulders everywhere, so. Such amazing geological formations. It makes you wonder what forces of nature, you know, made this landscape happen, you know. And we are uh, just a quarter of a mile in, so a quarter of the way in is one mile in, one mile out. And as I say many times, don't forget to look back. Even though we're gonna come this way, you know, but uh, many times the best views can be behind you. That's why when you, when you hike, when you do a, any hike or any drive, you know, it's a different, a different experience going there and then coming back. Because what's in front of you is different. Or what's behind, behind you in this case. Yeah. It's interesting vegetation. All right, there's our balanced rock. We can turn around now. I'm just kidding, of course. And again, I noticed that most of these trails, or all these trails at Big Bend, they don't have blazes or really well-marked cairns. I mean, there's rocks here and there, but sometimes it's kind of hard to follow the trail. I mean, over here it is obvious where the trail is, but that is not always the case. What a different hike, right? We've done two totally different hikes today. And this is the reason, one of the, the reason why I love coming to the West. Even though this is like the beginning of the West here, but all these sandstone formations, it's so unique. I think we're almost at the end. I see people up there. Yes, it is this way. Yeah, as always, don't forget to look back. This has been another beautiful hike here. And this is the fun part. They said like some scrambling was required, but it's really not that bad. That one is like a hand going like this. I don't know. They have a sign just so you don't get confused and go the other way. Which the other way is quite a nice view, actually. Well, I didn't bring a hands-free mount, so I'll catch up with you on the other side of this. It actually feels really good in the shade. That's kind of steep. Amazing rock formations. I think we've made it to the balanced rock. We have arrived at the famous balanced rock. is the case at places like this you know everybody wants to take the picture with the with the balanced rock so let's walk around and investigate a little bit to see what else there's around here it's like a little cave let's see what's back here If 
eventually we're able to take the coveted photo with no one behind. Down and down we go. Well, I didn't really film it because um, I had my hands full. Don't tell anybody, but we went off trail. We, we missed the trail. I don't know what happened. I felt like like Tristan of, of SUV RVing, you know, climbing off on the <laughs> scrambling on rocks. I mean, at no point we were in any real danger of falling to our to our certain death, but we could have, you know, twisted an ankle or whatnot. But we did it. Ili did it. Ili the climber. Now we're gonna get back to the to the RV and and start packing up because we're going to full hookups. I need a, I need a real shower and a real shave, and uh, we've been roughing it for for a couple of days here. But it was worth the roughness. I mean, the roughingness, roughing it. And we're back at the trailhead. We're going back to Jesus Basin, and here we have a dust devil. I believe that in the distance is the area we're visiting tomorrow, the Sierra del Carmen, and that would be on the Mexican side of the border. And uh, for some reason, jeeps are always in a hurry. <sighs> Off we go. I'm certainly gonna miss this place. This is uh, one of the best, one of the, one of the most scenic campgrounds, one of the most scenic campgrounds we've ever stayed at, for sure. Let's make sure we don't hit anything on the way out. There's a turnaround somewhere back there. This is it. saying goodbye to this marvelous place. Now the road will take us west, outside the park, to a town called Terlingua. We've heard great things. Here we are exiting the park through the western entrance. We're going to be staying at Paisano Village RV Park and Inn, 
it seems to be a good location, close to the entrance to the park, since we're coming back tomorrow, and close to Terlingua as well. Here's our site. We're pointing in the wrong direction, but we'll make it work. Well, this is Paisano RV Park here in, in Study Butte. Um, very close to Terlingua, which is where we're going next. We're gonna take a shower, you know, get a little more presentable. And it is re legitimately hot, so I don't know what we're gonna do if we have to boondock tomorrow, I mean, dry camp at Rio Grande Village. But for now, let's see. I mean, we have like two hours of daylight, so there's not a whole lot we're gonna be able to do, but we might come back later. After all that, let me tell you, after, I mean, it's been only two days, but after two days boondocking, yeah, it is gonna feel very nice to have full hookups. Here we are, arriving in Terlingua, which also happens to be a ghost town. And there are several places to eat, but we're looking for one in particular. Here we are, Starlight Theater, which also seems to be the town's local hangout spot. There's a little bit of a wait, so we have some time to kill. Here's the view from the front porch. The Lengua Jail. Are those the mule's ears in the distance? It's a prickly pear margarita. Yeah, we decided to come to the cantina while we waited. The famous Starlight Theater. Let's check the Terralingua jail here while we wait for our table. Okay. It looks historic. It is right next to the bathroom, so I don't know. By the way, we cleaned up, didn't we? <laughs> All right, so he says 45 minute wait, hopefully it is less, but the, the margaritas are awesome. Apparently um, made with a nectar made from, from the prickly pear cactus. Yeah, this front porch seems to be the main hangout. And our turn finally came, so let's eat. Mm, Santa Helena Margarita. We ordered the smoked brisket queso. We got the brisket. The brisket is a little too lean for my taste, but the ambience, the ambience is great. All right, that was the Starlight Theater. We have like half an hour of daylight left, so let's see what we can see. That is one big truck, Texas sized truck. Let's check out the ruins of the old Mercury mining town. It is kind of late to do a proper tour, but suffice to say, this was a booming town from the late 1800s through the first few decades of the 20th century. It is nowadays mostly a touristy town due to its proximity to Big Bend, but still very cool to see what remains. And I can see they have built some new structures around the ruins. There's the old St. Agnes Terlingua Church, established sometime around 1914. The name of the town apparently derived from Tres Lenguas, or three languages in Spanish, referring to English, Spanish, and Native American, the three languages spoken here in the days of the Old West. 
I am really taking advantage of the last few rays of sunlight here. Maybe we have time to stop at the cemetery. The cemetery dates back to the early 1900s and is still in use to this day. It is listed in the National Registry of Historic Places. Unfortunately, we're running out of daylight real quick here. This was very interesting. Cemetery. Definitely a desert sunset. saying goodbye to the Terlingua ghost town. We barely knew ya, but tomorrow great adventures await at Big Bend. Good morning, almost afternoon really, it's 10.54 a.m. <laughs> but you know, we, we worked a little bit here in the morning and uh, and now we're gonna go to our next uh, destination, Rio Grande Village here uh, there on, uh, on Big Bend National Park. But first, there's a small town, we have like two hours to kill and it's only one hour drive. There's a um, town called Lajitas, which uh, seems to be pretty cool, it's right on the border with Mexico. So we're gonna go there first. Which, by the way, Paisano RV Park here, pretty nice. I mean, no complaints. We didn't get a chance to enjoy it, really. I mean, we were just here for one night with full hookups, a long shower, you know, charge our battery. My only concern for the next two days is going to be rather warm. Not ideal for dry camping, but we'll see. Here we are. There's a bunch of resorts, a golf course, equestrian activities, but we're not going to do any of that. Now that we've killed roughly an hour in order to make time for our check-in at Rio Grande Village, let's get back into the park. On the next one, we're going to be camping at Rio Grande Village. We'll do a couple more hikes and nature trails. We'll take a dip in the Rio Grande and even cross into Mexico. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Right.
Ladies. 